told God everything. These were the last words that were said by this three-year-old Syrian boy who died from injuries that were given to him from a war that was blind to innocence. So by a show of hands, how many of you support letting in Syrian refugees? All right, well, a lot of people often ask, why should we care? And that's a valid question. If you want to know the personal benefits, then it could possibly um, help to remove current terror groups and future. It can also possibly help our economy because of what it's done to other countries. Also, if we let this problem escalate at this rate, how will we feel knowing that one day, instead of opening our arms, we succumb to fear? My name is Madiha, and this subject is important to me because my parents were refugees. Whenever my mom sees the news of what's going on in Syria, she's quick to remind me that we were once in that situation. Because of my background, I feel like it's important for me to care about this subject and help. 400, 470,000 Syrians have died so far because of the war, which is why we need to support them. It may not seem like there's much that we can do, that the fate of the Syrians is left in the hands of the government, but there actually is a lot that we can do on our level to help them. For example, we can join groups like the International Rescue Committee with the IRC, which helps refugees. Now, some people don't exactly know what the problem is. The problem is that Syria is stuck in a war that's so out of hand that so many different groups are fighting each other. It's only resulted in the suffering and killing of innocent civilians. This issue does concern us for a number of reasons. First of all, it helps to fight dangerous groups. Often when people think of Syrian refugees, one of the first things that comes to some people comes to mind is ISIS. However, what people don't understand, I think, is that by banning Syrian refugees, you're actually kind of helping ISIS in a way. According to the Washington Post, ISIS wants the Western world to isolate Muslims. They want them to be isolated so that they will feel scared and alone. And that way, they will turn to ISIS as their only supporter because they feel so lost. Banning Syrian refugees leaves them surrounded by the influence of ISIS. A lot of um, the recruits from them are also, Syrians often recruit the young Syri uh, Syrians that are over there. ISIS often recruits the young Syrians that are over there. So their schools are destroyed, their families are murdered in front of them, and then their houses are taken away from them. What you end up, is with, what you end up with is confused kids who don't understand what they did wrong, and then they feel angry because they, don't, they feel as if the rest of the world has abandoned them. So because of that, they see ISIS as the only way to help them. Chaos, a lack of education, and desperation are ways that terror groups are born and grow. Another concern is how it affects our economy. According to the Huffington Post, Turkey is hosting 2 million Syrian refugees. Jordan, 700,000. And in Lebanon, every one in fifth person is a Syrian refugee. People may think that these large numbers pose economic burdens, but it's actually not the case. Time Magazine says that the Turkish economy will see a 3% 3 increase in their economy, Lebanon a 2%, and Jordan a 10%. In spite of all that other information, supporting this ban goes against the words of Emma Lazarus in the New Colossus, which is engraved on our Statue of Liberty. It reads, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest tossed to me, I lift my lamp beside the golden door. Now the question to be asked is, what can we do to help? What we can do to help the Syrian refugees is joining organizations like the International Rescue Committee, the IRC, which helps to settle in refugees and provide them shelter. Helping the, them settle more smoothly will show that we can actually take in more refugees and that we're not afraid. As mentioned before, in the wake of this crisis, what's most important is letting these people know that they are not abandoned. The American administration proposed the plan of taking in 10,000 Syrian refugees. However, we've only taken 1,200 so far. 31 US governors have opposed letting in Syrian refugees into their states. The Bloomberg politics poll says that 53% of Americans are opposed to letting in any kind of Syrian refugees. This is because of the fear that coward terrorists will disguise themselves as refugees and be let in. However, the chances of this are very low to just place a ban. According to the Migration Policy Institute, in the years since 9-11, the U.S. has taken in 784,000 refugees, only three of whom have been arrested for terrorist-related activities. Those odds predict that less than one of the 10,000 Syrian refugees will be a terrorist. On top of that, 
refugees go through the most in-depth background, background check. They are screened by the National Counterterrorism Center, they're screened by the FBI, they're screened by the DHS, by the State Department. It's a total of a nine-step process that starts over again the second that any kind of new information is released. On top of that, most of the Syrian refugees that are let into here are actually just women, elderly, and children. So don't let these things deter you from lending a helping hand. Right now, Syrians are being killed off in large numbers. So at this time, we can't let fear prompt us to closing our doors. We have to be more active than ever by joining organizations like the International Rescue Committee. By a show of hands, how many of you would maybe consider joining that committee or look into it? So in my current history class, whenever we study past tragedies, I often wonder how people at that time reacted to it. They just, did they just sit there and let it happen? Did they protest? Did they even care? One day the future generation will be studying the Syrian crisis in their history textbooks. And when they ask what we did, what answer will you be able to give? 